Welcome to the November 30th Zoning Board of Adjustment. Our next meeting will be December 28th at 6.30, right here in the Matthew Thornton Room. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ben, would you uh, read the uh, preamble, please? Yes. Good evening to those in attendance and watching at home. For the benefit of those who have not previously attended a zoning board hearing, the procedure is as follows. The petitions will be heard in the order they appear on the agenda. However, the chair may change the order at their discretion. The board will treat all petitioners, their representatives, abutters, and other interested parties fairly and with respect. The petitioner will be asked to give an overview of their petition and read through their responses to the criteria applicable to their case, allowing for the board to ask questions after each item. State law and local ordinances establish the criteria that must be met in order for the board to grant approval to a petition, and it is a petitioner's responsibility to demonstrate that they have met each criteria. Following the presentation, the board will open the floor for public comment, either in favor or opposed to the request. If necessary, an opportunity for rebuttal will be offered to the petitioner in public. However, discussion will not be allowed to devolve into a back and forth arguments. All comments made should be directed to the chair. Should a question be asked, the chair will pose the question to the petitioner. Afterward, the chair will close the public hearing and the board will deliberate and vote on the petition. At this time, please silence all mobile devices. Thank you, Ben. What I'd like to do now is uh, swear in any people that you are planning on speaking tonight, if you could raise your right hand. I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. We only have three members on the board tonight. So in order for your petition to pass, all three of us will need to vote in favor of it. If one of us declines it, it will fail. So at this point, I would like to give, we have two petitioners, I would like to give you the opportunity to either continue tonight and take the chance with three of us uh, saying yay or nay, or you may reschedule and come back at the end of uh, December the 28th and make another attempt with a full board. No, we would make the decision now so that we would reschedule you and, and not go through the process tonight. If we go through the process, then our decision will be made. Is the, uh, are, are both parties here? Uh, James Gadboys? And you agree to continue? Okay. And I'm missing page two. Start in realty. That would be, be. Okay. So both of you would continue. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What we would like to begin with uh, James Gadboy's petitioner owner. Variance under section 2.02.1.C.2.C of the zoning ordinance to permit a detached ADU that is larger than 50% of the size of the primary dwelling unit, the PDU. The parcel is located at 85 Patton Road in the R1 Residential by Soils and Aquifer Conservation District, tax map 6C, lot 394, case number ZBA 2022-43. If you could uh, state your name. Yes, I'm James Gadboys. Thank you. Your speaker is on. And if you'd like to tell us a little bit about this, and then we'll go over your five points that you filled out. Okay. Um, yes, I'm James Gadboys. I live at 85 Patton Road. I built a three-car garage. I recently was uh, divorced, and um, I presently have been there since 2003. And I work in Boston as a union carpenter, and I pay for the place myself. The only one living there is myself and two dogs. And 
my plan was to put an apartment above the garage. Um, it's just a studio. And that would be for one person, and that would help with my expenses, whereas I pay them by myself. So that's where this is. That's where this got started, and that's what we want to do. Okay, you should have uh, filled out a form, which I believe I've got right here in front of me, with the five criteria. Do you have that with you? I d I don't have the copy of that. I didn't. They they took the copy. I haven't done this. So. What what we <clears throat> okay no we'll, we'll we'll certainly work with you. What we need to do is when you filled out the the page with the five que uh, variants the questions. That's what you yeah that's what you filled in. Okay, what we'll do is we'll do step by step each one. You will read the the title of like number one granting the variance. You will explain how you feel about that you will hesitate and then the board will have an opportunity to ask questions if we do have questions if there are no questions then you'll go on to number two then three and down to number five okay okay so, so you could start with number one please okay so question one reads granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because i wrote uh added square footage to the top of this building would have no effect on the public awareness because you wouldn't even see it. It's basically a 10 by 10 area, okay. which is 100 square feet. Any questions? Okay, number two, please. So two, this, in the spirit of the ordinance is observed because I imagine when dealing with square footage and making a limit, um, I didn't bring my glasses, keeps the ordinance to a standard. So I guess what how I perceived that was I didn't want to encroach on what their criteria was. You know, if there was a thousand square feet, I could, I could see the point. But um, with the hundred square feet, it was basically a bathroom, and I wrote that I, ba I basically with an extra hundred square feet, I didn't think that it would, you know, overstep my bounds as far as keeping the ordinance as standard. Okay. I guess that's what the best way. Ben. Okay, so you referenced that you're building an apartment over the garage. You understand that you're building it to the ADU regulations? Yes. Okay, common utilities? Right. Okay. Right. I mean, it was, there's, it's more electrified there than it is in the actual house. But like I said, I kept it pretty, um, I guess the best thing to say is when I built it, I, I made a, an in cove, so, You'd have to see pictures. I don't know if there are a picture of it. So the person that would live up there has a separate entrance. And you can't even see the second door. So I build for a living. So when I designed the building, I kept in mind, you know, we didn't want to make it look like there was like a duplex on top of next to my house. You know, so you got three car garage and then there's one door that you see. So, um, yeah, so that's basically part of the standard that I wanted to keep. And then when I did this, the square footage and we talked, I talked to Robert about it um, when, I, when we figured it out. Um, what I don't know, there's a knee wall there. So if you take the full square footage, this is just a side note. So you take the full square footage, but then in the back it's a 12 pitch. So you know you're gonna walk into the side of the, um, the slope of the roof. So if you come in six feet and stand a wall up, which goes the whole length of the building, well, you technically lose six feet by 40 feet, which is 240 square feet. So that's why I was saying with the 100 square foot encroachment, I'm not sure if they realize that there's actually, the, not, it's not the actual building size upstairs as it is the square footage of, the, say, the foundation and the garage itself, which is 24 wide uh, by 40 long. You understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would that so six that foot would by 40 feet be still be storage? Well, I mean, there's a knee. It's a knee wall. I mean, you. I don't even know. There's not. It's just a pie shape. So okay. it's. I mean, I guess you could put skis or something long okay. in there, but it's not really a. Okay. 
Any other questions? Because of the because of that twelve pitch. Now, if I would have built a knee wall four feet high, well, now you could have put okay. closet doors. You know what I mean? So sure. that space is what I want you guys to know that is being lessened in the actual room itself, which, like I said, is six by the forty, which is two hundred and forty square feet. Okay. Oh, just, Robert. Just for clarification, um, so the board understands, this is a detached ADU, and in this case, the primary dwelling unit is uh, 1,232 square feet. For a detached ADU, you're allowed either 1,000 square feet or 50% of the size of the main house, whichever results in a smaller ADU. So in this case, the house being 1232, he's capped off at 616 square feet for an ADU, and he's proposing one that's slightly larger. Thank that's you. why he's here. Well, my, well, my question is, uh, ADU is for, that's usually is defined by a uh, relative or family member. Correct? No, that's not, that, no. No longer? That is no longer. Okay. Okay, number three, please. Granting this variance would do substantial justice because it would allow um, more space for the studio apartment. So I didn't, I mean, I'm looking at this, and, and number three, um, the benefit of the petitioner should not be overweighed by harm of the general public. Yeah, so I actually feel like that's not even a, that's a non-issue. Any questions? No. Okay. Number four, please. Number four, granting the variance would not diminish the values of the surrounding properties because it does not diminish the surroundings because it is inside and the added interior space cannot be seen from the outside. Questions, Ben? Nope. Okay, number five, unnecessary hardship. Okay, unnecessary hardship, owing the following special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Explain how no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purpose and the ordinance provision and the specific <clears throat> application of the provision to the property. As I have stated, we are only trying to use the upstairs gar uh, garage as an ADU. I feel the community and neighbors are not affected in having the complete upstairs utilized it was recently i was recently divorced and have been struggling to make ends meet b the proposed use is reasonable one because i live here alone and i have no help and it's substantial with the bills like i had stated and having one person studio would supplement all the monthly and yearly expenses any questions the um you had mentioned the 10 by 10. That's a little bit bigger than a bathroom, <laughs> close to a bedroom size. Well, it's that, a closet. That, even. Is that, it, it will be used as a closet? Well, that's actually, if you think the bathroom that I put in that was on the gable end is six with the knee walls, I think it's 12, all right? So that's 72 square feet. And then there's a closet on the other end, which is six feet by no more than five so there's 35 say square feet okay so you think com the combined size of both of those rooms okay. is almost equal to 100 square feet okay any questions Okay, I'd like to close this portion and I'd like to open it up to the public. If anybody would like to speak in favor of this motion. Seeing none, I would like to open it to people who are against this motion. Seeing none, would you, do you have any final comments before we close it for discussion at the board? Yeah, I don't know if you've been by the place, but when I bought this place, it was, um... <clears throat> 1790 had no trees no bushes no walkways no driveway i put over a hundred thousand dollars into this lot and including eighty five thousand dollars to build the garage of my own money and looking at what transpired over the say how long have i been there almost 20 years i think i've cleaned that corner up pretty well and then my neighbor next door so it's 
we're looking good for the community, I think. That's all I want to say. Great. Thank you. I'd like to close this public and open it for discussion on the board. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, I don't have any particular issues with it. And looking at this, I think that uh, he's met the criteria. Um, the 100 square feet uh, does not expand the building, expand the footprint. And I think he's well within reason to what he's asking. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve variant, uh, J James Gadboy's petitioner owner variance under section 2.02.1C.2.C. .2 of the zoning ordinance to permit a detached ADU that is larger than 50% of the size of the primary dwelling units. Uh, the parcel is located at 85 Patton Road in the R1 residential by soils and aquifer conservation districts, tax map 6C lot 394 case number ZBA 2022-43. There are no uh there are no provisions. Oh, hold a second. Staff guidance. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, there are no staff criteria. No conditions. However, the law now has required that you need to make a finding of fact determination on the uh, petitioner's responses that if they were sufficient to address that. You'll see a staff suggested motion. I would suggest you use that instead. Okay. So I'll use this instead. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient provided each criterion is met and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact and further to grant the variance under section 2.02.1.C.2.C of the zoning ordinance to permit a detached ADU that is larger than 50% of the size of the primary dwelling units. You also love it. Do I have a second? Second. Mission uh, variance made by Patrick, seconded by Ben. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And I have to abstain. Abstained. Mm -hmm. um, passes three, zero, one. One. Okay, just to remind you that there is a 30 day window that somebody could object. Sure. and and um, slow this process down for you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take over? I'm gonna continue. No, okay. um, as we continue, we have a fourth member that has joined us. So to change that, we have four members. Yep. You have to have three members in agreement with one potential uh, Disagreement. So if two people disagree, you the motion will fail. Right, right. Or actually now Chuck's here. So okay. now, now you have a full So board. now we have a fifth. So now you have a full board. So now you're all set. And also as uh are you staying as chair or is Rich gonna take over? Actually I think Rod should continue as chair. You're going to want to swear Chuck in because he's not going to be an alternate. Thank you. You're looking for my own. Do you have a plan on the PDF? Yeah, if you plug that in the side of the project. Yes. Is there a cheat sheet here? Done? Yeah, you have a cheat sheet. Actually, yeah. Chuck, would you uh, be so kind as to fill in for uh, Ms. Christensen? Thank you. So we now have five members on the board. This next petition is Staten Realty LLC, petitioner owner, special exemption under section 2.02.3C1 of the zoning ordinance to permit a gasoline fueling station use in the C2 General Commercial District 
The parcel is located at 376 DW Highway in the C2 General Commercial Aquifer Conservation and Elderly Housing Overlay District, tax map 4D-3, lot 2, KCBA 2022-44. If you could state your name. Uh, my name is David Frothingham. Okay. Clay, civil engineer, represents the Is your um, microphone lit up green? Bright green. It is, it is now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about it, and then we'll get into the five criteria. Yes, so uh, Start and Realty uh, owns the Patriot Car Wash at 376 Daniel Webster Highway, uh, and they are proposing to install a uh, three dispenser gasoline um, and diesel dispensing station. Um, the existing car wash is proposed to remain. Uh, they would also like to uh, expand the building to include a small convenience store and a drive through coffee shop. So understanding that the gasoline use is the reason we're here this evening. Okay. Um, the site proposes to uh, ex kind of widen the entrance uh, onto Daniel Webster Highway. We did a traffic study. Um, we're proposing to widen the highway slightly and basically connect the turning lanes for the two shopping area centers that are on either side of us to create a turning lane through that whole area. Um, the car wash as a base use warrants a turning lane. So anything that we propose requires uh, you know, improvements to that road to improve traffic safety as well as pedestrian safety. Um, we're also proposing a sidewalk across the front. The gasoline, um, the the fuel dispensing system will consist of uh, two 15,000 gallon double wall tanks uh, for gasoline, premium, and diesel. The tanks are to be double walled. All the piping is double wall. Um, the dispensers will sit on a standard dispenser sump uh, so that everything is, is fully contained. All the sumps, both underneath the dispenser and in the tank, are monitored. There's a tank monitoring system, so if there's any leaks um, or water gets into any of those systems, there's an alarm that goes off on the site. Um, this is all you know, required by the state for uh, underground storage of petroleum products. Um, as I mentioned, we're proposing three dispensers, each with two hoses. Um, this will re require a fueling pad, which is where the car is parked when they're getting fueled. That pad is proposed to be equipped with a positive limiting barrier, which are the grooves that you see around the edges of concrete pads at gas stations. Um, they're designed to hold five gallons of, if there's a spill, hold up to five gallons. That is a minimum requirement by the state. Given the size of this pad, it holds about twice as much. Okay. Do we have any questions before we get at the criteria on the board? I, actually, I, I do have a question. I do too. You, you go first, because I don't really know how to word mine. Do you have, can you pull out the plan of what this is going to look like when it's built? Or is that what I'm looking at now? The, this is the plan of what it's going to look like when it's built. So, zoom in a little bit. So I, I, don't, I don't see how you're going to fit all this in there, but. So this is all going to be added to the car wash? Correct. Correct. So uh, on this site today, there's that center island in the site where all the um, vacuums are. Could, could you take a pencil or a pen and kind of, or, or uh, you know, there we go. Yes, yeah, yeah, here we go. Thank you. So today there's an island right here. That's the vacuums. Where the vacuums are. And the site <clears throat> circulates in this direction around through the car wash. Um, it, it today already has a one way in, one way out access to the road. Um, we are proposing to expand that so you have the one way in on one side and then a left and a right turn coming out. Um, so, so uh, circulation through the site will will move in this in this direction. Um, so the the vacuumed islands come out and those that's where the Dispensers are proposed to be installed. And then 
that leaves the rear of the site for the queuing for the drive through and for the car wash. Um, parking will remain at the edges, so parking along here. The vacuum islands get replaced in this area here, and then there's parking along this side. Um, the proposed convenience store is quite small, so there, there's only a few employees, so the parking requirements are fairly minimal. There is quite a bit of parking out there today that is underutilized. So the proposed the proposed coffee shop is a drive up only. There's yeah, you can't... yeah. There's no no seating proposed. You can't go in. It's drive through only. Okay. That's uh. I used to I used to manage a car wash when I was in college, and I know in the winter time when you have a nice day, I was, I, you can wash five six hundred cars. I, I've done it, and I just I, I mean I don't know traffic wise. I think you're gonna be tight but i mean I, I see what you're i see what you're proposing but i i really i've been amazed to see how they do on a, on a nice day in the winter when everyone's trying to get salt off their cars and they got four or five hundred cars going through there um but yeah that's that's so going to be tight the circulation pattern for the car wash doesn't doesn't change yeah. it is an attended facility so there's no uh there's no you know there's no payment kiosk or anything someone comes out to your car yeah yeah and yeah takes payment yeah it's tight and then the cars coming around the uh the donut shop or the coffee shop there they're going to come around and we're now so the property line seems to be on an angle it is so walk it, me yeah. through how do the cars walk can you, you got your mouse there can you walk me through how do the cars actually so kind of get out of the donut shop area the way it's proposed is there's there's two windows here yep and then the cars continue straight through and there, there's a drive that's constructed along the property line mm -hmm. and then it merges with the um, exit from the car wash okay and then excuse me uh, uses the same exit from the site here i'll be interested to see what that looks like that's going to be tight but yeah okay cool thanks Pitch. i think my question was really more about the the traffic coming from the drive through so that's going right up against the property line yeah, there's there's five or six feet there adjacent to the property line. It's a, it's an open kind of grassy area now. Um, it's where the recycling system for the car wash is. Okay. I guess I'm. I think my question's more directed at at Robert. Uh, that that doesn't require any kind of variance to have traffic up against the edge of the park of uh, the property. No, no, only structures need to be set back. The driving lane does not matter. Yeah, you said that's part of the car washes recycling. You mean the water reclamation systems? Yeah. Are they going to move the water reclamation systems? No, or? we avoid it. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, it's in three tanks, which are right here. I'm looking on the overhead view. I, I see them. Okay. Um, what was one of the comments that came from um, the sewer department was more information on how that system works, which I've asked the owner for. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions before we move on to the criteria? Chuck? I'm just curious um, uh, that I, I don't see any uh, electric uh, charge facility. Uh, we haven't proposed any at this time. I, I, I was just curious. You talk about for electric vehicles? Yeah. Okay. It's 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 not it's not intended to be a, a an area where people stay for a long time. Um, but if the board feels that that's important, we can look at having that added. I'd I'd have to ask the owner if they want to add that. I, the, the board is not requesting that. Okay. That would be the owners, and then. Should the owner decide on that, then you would deal with the planning board on that. Yep. Thank you. Okay, if we can move on to the five items of criteria, please. The application we filled out had four Yeah, items. just to clarify, this is a special exception, not a variance. So there's only four criteria. There's no hardship? Correct. It, okay. it actually, with special exceptions, um, 
unlike a variant, a special exception is allowed. So we're not yeah, just okay. We're just making sure that they did the paperwork appropriately with a special exception. Thank you. Okay, if you could read each one and then hesitate yep. between the next to give us an yep. opportunity to ask questions. So a, the specific site is an appropriate location for such a use or uses in terms of overall community development. Uh, this is in the um, commercial district. It is surrounded by other commercial uses. So this is an appropriate area for a gasoline dispensing station uh, along a major road within town uh, as it is an allowed use with a special exemption. Any questions? I guess, so my only question is, mm -hmm. and by the way, this has really very little to do with the, the, uh, the proposal and more to do with the, 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 the concept. There's a lot of competition on DW highway for both. I, I'm just curious what differentiators there are with this particular. That was brought up by the planning commission when we came in for a sketch plan review about eight months ago. Um, the owner feels that the combination of the car wash, the drive through coffee shop and gas gas will differentiate them this site from others. Okay. Number two or B. B. Uh, the use as developed will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Again, um, this is a commercial neighborhood. We've got shopping centers on either side um, and we are proposing to uh, expand the sorry extend the turning lanes to provide um, queuing distance for people turning into the site um, as well as improving the access to the site um, and, and, yeah, it's, and there there is a residential development across the street but that's buffered by uh, existing woods and horseshoe pond okay questions C, please. Uh, C, there will be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians because, again, we are improving the, the access, vehicular access, as well as the road to provide turning and queuing. And uh, as requested by the Planning Commission, we are adding a sidewalk across the front. Um, it is connecting to a sidewalk to the south. Um, there is no sidewalk to the north, so it goes to the property line and terminates there. Questions from the board? D, please. Adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for proper operation of the proposed, use, proposed uses. Um, so again, we've done traffic studies, we've done circulation plans, um, you know, shown that, that we can get you know, delivery trucks in and out of the site safely. Uh, we can you know, bring a tracker trailer into the site and, and have it exit. Um, we provide the appropriate queuing lengths um, if both the drive through business and the car wash were busy at the same time. There is plenty of space to queue cars through the site. Any question? Yeah. If someone wants to bypass someone, I don't know. I, I, I hate doing the hypotheticals because we could do that all night, but someone wants to get out of line at the donut shop. I mean, is there enough room for them to get around it and, and bypass everything and pass the drive through window with, or do they have to wait and just drive out? Um, there is enough room to get past the drive through windows. Um, but if there is a long queue, um, there will be a couple cars, you know, at the back of the building. Yeah. Cause I'm looking at it. And you can't really, once you kind of commit to that, turn yeah at once, the top there once, once you're, you're kind of in that one of these two vehicles queue. here yeah or these two vehicles here you might have i was to actually this. going all the way back a little bit further to <laughs> yeah well, yeah they, there yeah once if, you commit to that it looks like you are your your pot committed at that point um at that point you're getting a coffee or a car wash yeah exactly <laughs> i mean i so i just i i mean you know so much easier mind they got you know, something comes up there's no way for them to really get out of the lane yes they, these these vehicles back here would be stuck so um, my, my that that was one of my questions the other question is is that where that dumpster is how are you i mean how are you getting a a, a, a dump vehicle back i mean so those the, lines the, cute 
So the 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 dumpster servicing will have to occur off hours. Okay. As well as fuel delivery will have to occur off hours. Yeah, that was my other question is how yep. do you get an 18 wheeler in there? Yep. And and I mean and around the building as well. So the 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 fuel delivery actually will come in and can make this movement and go back out. Oh, okay, there'll be that much room. Yep. Okay. There's enough room there for because a a fuel delivery uh tanker mm -hmm. isn't as big as a as an interstate like box truck. Um the the uh trailer is shorter. Oh, okay. So it can it can make that movement there, um, and and it does have access you know to part of the concrete pad in the back, um, okay. so it can it can pass through that through that direction. But okay. yeah, fuel deliveries and, and trash hauling will have to occur in off hours. When you said that uh, the dumpster and the fuel and stuff will be in off hours, what's the anticipated operating hours for the well? The Cow wash is obvious, but for the donut shop and the fuel, uh, the fueling will be maybe twenty four hours. Makes sense. Yep. Um, as an un as an unattended facility in the state of New Hampshire, it would then have required to have, have fire suppression systems in place. Um, the coffee shop, you know, you're talking early in the morning, you know, six a.m. through afternoon. The, the car wash currently, I believe the hours are only like eight to five right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. But again, it's an attended facility, so it's not open 24 hours. There's no way to make take payments for that. Thank you. Ben? I have a question. You, you mentioned several times a convenience store. Is it a store housing all kinds of you know, edible merchandise like a Seven Eleven. No, no, because it's it's, in and it's out. only going to be a few hundred square feet, so it doesn't have the the space to be something like that. But you're talking, you know, windshield washer fluid, wiper blades, a few small snacks. But it's not a full on convenience store like you would think of as a Seven Eleven or something like that. So, but it's a it's a small retail space which exists there today. So they're going to be able to walk in there and buy stuff. People can walk in there and buy stuff. There's a bathroom. So in. where do they park their cars? So you've got parking here along the building. You also have, you know, the spaces at the at the dispensers, and then you've got parking over here. So you're gonna have pedestrians crossing several traffic flows. If if someone were to park here, yes. But realistically, it's you know people who are parked at the dispenser or parked here by the building. Where's the entrance, the pedestrian entrance to the here to the to the convenience store? Yes. Yeah, right here. So you you wouldn't step out into the traffic lane. So oh, so that's more okay. more of a part of the car wash than the donut shop. Yeah, they're they're separate. Okay, they're, they're totally right. separate. That's yep. right. That's yeah, the coffee right. shop is a standalone. Okay, there is no seating in there. People can't go in there and, and get something. Right. That's only that, drive up. That's right. I thought you had said that earlier, but then you said people can go in and buy stuff. It's like okay, no, which no, are that's the, just okay. Thank you. The retail space is to the right of the car wash, right? This 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 there's an existing retail space, attendant station, and retail space in here along with the bathroom. So we're looking for proposing to expand that. But again, it's not going to be what you think of as a standard 7-Eleven or Cumberland Farms. Yeah, that, that's how I was, because I, I think to your question, that's going to be the coffee shop. Right. That's going to be the community. Right. Yeah. But that, that's what I thought. But then when we talked about possible uh, customers going in to buy things, it's like, okay, now they got to walk around the car wash. No. But you've no. explained that. Thank you. Yep. There's no, there is no pedestrian yeah. access to okay. the coffee okay. shop. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Chuck, you all set? I'd like to open this up to the public if anybody would like to speak in favor of this petition. Seeing none, if anybody would like to speak against this petition. Oh, we have one person. If you could uh, give her some room and allow her to come to the microphone. Sure, if you could, if you could come down to the microphone, just identify yourself. And just please make sure you direct the questions to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that microphone's fine. Yes, the light's still bright green. Okay. Identify yourself. 
and then you can ask your questions and then we'll direct it to Gemma. Okay, my name is Katie Little and I live in an adjacent property. Um, my questions are related specifically to the development of this lot as a neighbor uh, and a resident of Horseshoe Pond. Okay, thank you. Um, let me just open my notes. I don't have a copy of the, I guess it's a copy is right here that I can use. Um, I just question um, whether or not the site is an appropriate location for a gas fueling station. Um, I live in a residential condo nearby and um, there's a lot of residential condos in that area. So I almost consider the neighborhood residential in nature. I know it's a commercial lot, but um, my particular development has 49 units. There are a couple hundred units across the street um, some new ones currently being built. So there are businesses in the area, just not, um, you know, commercial industrial use. Um, so I just am here to raise the question of whether or not it's appropriate to have a fueling station in, in this particular neighborhood. Um, and then I related to item B, whether or not this will adversely affect the neighborhood. Um, I'm curious about the proximity to the pond and the environmental impacts and whether or not that will impact our neighborhood. Um, currently, there is a lot of runoff into the Horseshoe Pond watershed area. Um, and I'm just here to ask about the proximity of the gas station to the pond. I think there is an environmental requirement in the state that says and, you know, a gas station has to be at least 250 feet from a pond, and I think we're pushing that proximity. Um, so I'm just here to ask the questions and get answers as to how this will impact the um, okay the neighborhood in terms of the environmental quality. Do we have a microphone that he can speak into without coming up in case she has a follow-up question? Yes, the one in the oh, back. Right the back. If you would like to grab that microphone and maybe you can answer her question about the your know, protection against the runoff into the um, the pond opposite the gas, your potential gas station. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so the site is does propose to improve the stormwater system that's there. Currently, there are excuse me, two or three catch basins on site that infiltrate. Um, we are proposing to upgrade that system with a pretreatment system, including an oil water separator. Uh, petroleum products are less dense than water, so they float, so they stay in there. Um, we are mimicking the existing runoff patterns. This site actually doesn't discharge uh, to the road. It's kind of a low, air, a low point in the area. Um, with regards to the setbacks from uh, waters of the state for underground tanks, uh, the requirement is uh, 75 feet from waters of the state to a, any portion of an underground storage system. Um, we are 225 feet, give or take a little bit, from Horseshoe Pond. Uh, we were here a couple nights ago for the Conservation Commission hearing because we do are required to get a permit from the state uh, for work within the shoreland buffer because of the work on the road and the work at the front of the parcel. Um, but we'll meet all the state standards as far as uh, double wall tanks, double wall piping, containment systems to to offset those impacts from a gas station. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Um, so you said the site um, drains to the back. It doesn't drain towards the front of the site across it, the road down the hill. It it does drain to the front, um, but there's a catch basin. Sorry, doesn't show this particular plant, but there's a catch basin that's going to be located right here. Mm -hmm. That that's the low point of the site. Everything drains to there. Mm -hmm. um, so it just filters through the ground. Yeah, we're, we're, we are proposing a infiltration system. Um, the site has great gravelly and sandy soils. So it's mimicking what it does today. 
What happens if uh, there's an issue with one of the pumps, like a leak? So you have the positive limiting barrier that's around the, the whole dispensing system that can hold up to five gallons. The old water separator can also, also can hold, I don't, I don't know exactly how much, it's like 500 gallons. But the low point where you're saying the yeah, so accumulates. The, the, catch, the, the catch basin discharges to an old water separator. So because uh, petroleum products float on water, the water goes out, but leaks, you know, diesel, gasoline, oil, they all remain in that tank. So it won't be discharged to the, to the subsurface. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think speaking to item A, whether or not, I, I don't know if you're able to speak to whether or not this is an appropriate, an appropriate location for this type of use. Um, I know it's in a commercial district, um, but there are, in recent uh, planning board approvals, have been a lot of residential uses approved in this commercial district lately. And there is a lot of pedestrian traffic. Um, these are, you know, I, I think that people live in this area. There's going to be um, off gassing from the fueling. Um, you're going to smell gasoline if you live nearby. And um, I think it, it, although it's a commercial lot, I think it's more of a residential neighborhood. Uh, from my experience, I'm not from Merrimack. I got here two years ago. Sure. I've lived here two years, but that is my experience of, of where I live. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I do have a question uh, for you, though, um, the abutter. Yes. Um, I'm looking, so I, I'm just looking at the property on the map here. You said you're adjacent? Um, an adjacent property. I'm in um, 73 Horseshoe Pond. You're across the street. Across the street. But our property is technically considered, um, I guess it's an abutter because we our property would be affected by the, the site. Directly across from DW Highway. Right. Yeah, they, they own the, the slope between, that, that's part of their common land. So what is like there? Are you familiar with that, Rich? I, did, I'd like I, to... I, I drive by this place probably five times, six times a week, and for the life of me, I can't picture it in my head. That's... <laughs> it's direct, almost across it. from King Cone. Oh, uh, yes, a, a okay. Little, I think it's... They change the name to DW Way or DW, DW Place, Drive. DW Drive, yeah. and then you've got Island Pond, the road there, and then you've got Horseshoe Pond, um, the development. Yeah, our entrance is down towards King Cone. My unit is all the way in, so it's a lot closer to way the gas station property. The high numbers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to imagine some. I'm looking at map. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. I don't know what I'm looking at. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'd, I'd just like to comment on the, the vapor. Um, this system is equipped with a vapor recovery if, system. If you could speak into the so mic so it's on record. The, right. the proposed gas station is equipped with a vapor recovery system. So when fuel is delivered to the site, the vapor that's in the tanks gets moved back to the truck. It doesn't get discharged to the air. Um, the only time that air enters the system, air only enters the system. It's when fuel is dispensed from it it pulls air in, but when fuel is delivered to the tanks, that vapor is moved back to the truck. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will say, and I'm hoping this is due to regulation, not related to this, that uh, I went to a newer gas station that was filling their tanks, and I couldn't smell gas while I was filling my truck. So, I mean, other than, the, you know, if I were to obviously smell the pump, but I'm used to, you know, I think... You know, to her point, I'm used to going to like mobile gas stations and you can smell that driving by. You don't even have to pull in. Yeah. The, 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 the way that the, the tanks are vented, fresh air can only go into the tank. But when a large quantity of fuel is delivered, that vapor is moved back to the truck. The vent cap for the tank requires uh, two and a half pounds of pressure to allow something out. So it's only an emergency vent. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Do you have any final comments before we close it? Unless the well, court before we do that, is there anybody else who would like to make a comment against this petition? Seeing none, 
Any final comments before we close the public and have the a board, board discussion? Has further questions for me? I don't have a question. I do have a comment. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if we, I don't think we take a look at this, but uh, this has the potential, I think, to, because there's no traffic light there. Correct. This has the potential to impact traffic on DW Highway, particularly around 5 p.m. when I was driving home from Boston and. Yeah, it's it's a mess. To his point, though, the guess the, the car wash closes at five. So, does it? I, I don't recall the exact hours of the car wash. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, so like I said, years ago, I used to run a car wash most of the time. Closed by five, six. Usually closed by five. I mean, just that's that's just. That, but I I mean, but that was. I'll be honest, I'll perfectly be honest, I'll age myself here. That was like 30 years ago. So yeah. I don't know what the hours they keep now, but I can't imagine. Five o'clock. Well, I was going to say the gas stations uh, I go to, I'm I'm in the. Uh, gas station, yeah, I could see the gas station. No, I mean, wash I mean, the car washes. I've had, I've been going to gas stations at, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night. Getting yeah. my car wash. So right. it's, I think it's possible. Like I said, can... I, 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 you know, could stand corrected. I drove the site uh, uh, late in the afternoon. And I think it was between. Uh, either right a little before five or a little after and there was a sign car wash closed so they're not running the car wash at six and seven at night and i doubt they're running it interesting okay. it might be open a little bit later during the summer hours but yeah, yeah. um but i think to rich's comment um there could be a traffic problem first thing in the morning people grabbing their coffees coming and going and of course the gas station and at any given point if there's an accident on uh, Henry Burke traffic is no, I'm just making the comment I'm not for or against yeah. my comments the other thing too and I, I guess it really this is dependent on what coffee establishment goes in there um, the Dunkin Donuts right up the street um, early in the morning that line is wrapped around the building yeah like and if that happens here that's I don't know I I, I don't I don't I like I said I I don't know that that would be the issue with this particular place, but I would I would be worried that might box people in. Okay. Just to add, we have done a considerable work on a traffic study. Okay. You know, looking at the lights on either side of this of this property, and which is how we arrived at the need for a turn lane, so that people trying to turn into the site are not blocking traffic in either direction. Okay. I think we've mostly had our board discussion, but I'm going to officially close the public portion <laughs> and officially open the board discussion. I mean, when you talk about the traffic, I mean, you know, King Cone, any day during the summer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but people can go, you know what? I'll just go to Hayward's. Yeah, well, when it comes to gas. Yeah, that's, yeah. well, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But. Any further comments amongst the board? I, I don't have anything else to add. I, I other than when I took a look, I like I said, years and years and years ago, years and years and years ago, ran a car wash. I think it looks a little tight, doable. I I, I guess, but it looks tight. If you ask me, I I think, I think if people use it through experience, they can work their way through it in a reasonable amount of time. They'll do so. But if it's cars just jammed in the lot there, you know, you keep driving by. Like I go to King, I go to Dunkin' Donuts, and if I see the cars all wrapped around, I don't turn in. I got my uh, coffee maker at home. So, or one um, of the other multiple Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so I think I think the traffic becomes a self-managing process uh, based on that day and your prior experience. And I think the uh, within about a half a mile, a quarter of a mile, you've got three other gas stations. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Between yeah. Prime, New yeah. World, and the ones I lost about. Okay. Do I have any motions? I'll make a motion. Um, given that this is a special exception, I. Got to use a special motion on the back. Thank <laughs> you.
that the, is that the right one? That's for variance. That's okay. Sorry about that. No, my no. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the ordinance criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact and further to grant the special exception under section 2.02.3C1 of the zoning ordinance to permit a gasoline fueling station use in, or fueling station use in the C2 general commercial district where the condition that the petitioner shall obtain site approval plan from the planning board for the addition of the gasoline fueling station use and convenience store use to the car wash use. Like this. And should the board grant the special exception, it should be conditioned on approval from the planning board, which I thought that was already part of this. That was a part of the okay. motion. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll pay attention. No, it's... I. Honestly, I didn't even Do realize I have a this second was here. For that? Second. Thank you. Motion to grant by Rich. Seconded by Ben. All in favor? Aye. Passes 500. Thank you again. Thank you for your time. 30 day window that somebody may come in and yep. appeal. That completes our petitions. Robert, do you have any comments? Um, as has been noted tonight, um, in staff memos, we've started adding some suggested motions to try to help you out uh, in, in event that you're going to either grant or deny something. We can't explicitly make recommendations to you, but we can at least lay out all the alternatives for you and uh, have all the language in there that needs to be there to satisfy the law and, and whatnot. So. Just trying to be helpful for you, so that way you'll have that in there from now on. I, I for one, appreciate that. <laughs> and um, I'm sure that as Tim watches this, he appreciates me reading that. <laughs> yeah, so in, in, the, in, in, the, in each staff memo that you'll get for each individual project, you'll have that at the end. Yeah, I, I think I think it's better that than than us being told, you know, once a year, you guys aren't doing this right. Can you please, 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 for the eighth time, do this right? Yeah. Trying to do it off the cuff. Does um, any uh, board members have any comments? I do. Um, I formally apologize for not being here at six thirty. That's uh, that's on me. Um, yes, Chuck. <clears throat> I'll follow on for Rich. Uh, I apologize uh, being tardy. I was completely confused by all the changes. The change in the meeting date, the change in daylight savings, and so forth. Um, I apologize. I will <laughs> try to be on time in the future. Apologies accepted. Glad you showed up. I have a motion to approve the minutes for October 26th, 2022. Do I have a second? Second. Motion to accept the minutes by Ben, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? Aye. Three. Uh, abstain. 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 So it passes three zero two. And do I have a motion real, to real quick? Who were the abstentions? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The abstention was Rich and Patrick. Rich, thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion to adjourn by Patrick, seconded by Ben. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done deal. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll Merry see Christmas. you.